What's up guys? Welcome back. So in the last video in this series, we painted this guitar orange. And honestly, it's looking pretty good. Haven't done any polishing to it or anything. Just a couple quartz, coats of orange. Quartz. Eh, not quartz. A couple coats. It's got a nice gloss finish and you can see the grain through it. Nice even coat of paint. Honestly, looks good. And if I wanted to do that without the grain showing, I would have just done a quick grain fill and uh, some primer, sanded it, and then done the orange. We talked about this in the last one, so if any of this is news to you, please go check it out. So really, this guy doesn't even have clear coat on it. Uh, this isn't finished, in my opinion, but this paint's pretty durable, and really, you could call this a, a job done if you wanted to. Uh, in this video, we're going to make this paint job a little more interesting. So I'm still liking the green pattern, I'm not going to do anything about that right now, but I am going to add some graphics work to this. I'm going to make this, uh, I'm going to make this look cooler than it already is, by far, hopefully. So the first thing I got to do if I want to add paint on top of this, particularly for a gloss finish, is I got to make sure that that paint can stick. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you already know what that means. If you haven't, you still may already know what that means. But anyway, what it means is I have to abrade this. I have to give the paint something to grab hold of, you can't even see my hand motions, to grab hold of when I put the next layer on, okay? Because paint either bonds mechanically or chemically, and when it's sticking to something that's fully cured like this, it needs to bond mechanically. So what I'm gonna do is take my red scotch bright, and I'm gonna go over this whole thing, and take all of that gloss off of there, hopefully you can see the difference. Here's the glossy part, and then there's the part I just sanded. It doesn't take much, you just need to take that gloss off of there and abrade this surface a little bit. Don't go through the paint, okay, we want that orange still there, but, but take, uh, well, shouldn't say orange, whatever color you're using, for me it's orange. Uh, take that gloss off and make sure that you've got that surface nicely abraded so that the next coat will stick. I'm going to do that to the whole guitar, obviously, um, because even the parts that I'm not painting over per se are going to get clear coat after and I want that clear coat to be able to stick. So there's no reason for me to not do this to everything. Now I know some people get kind of nervous when they're sanding paint. They're like, oh it looks good, do I really want to sand it? Well yeah, I mean if you want to put more paint over top, you kind of have to. And I know it's going to get rid of the gloss that's on it, but we can put that back after. So don't panic over this. I know I had one guy uh, I was polishing a guitar on a video and I sanded it to do that and he said, oh my god, what's wrong with you? This is completely stupid. Why would I sand something I've just put all this effort into painting? Well, do you want to do a good job or not? Alright, so I've got this whole guitar scuffed down now. Uh, it's all abraded. The gloss is gone. But this also means that because I was sanding it, there's dust all over it. So we need to clean that up. One of the worst things that you can have get in when you're doing a paint job is have dust get in to your paint. And of course, this thing being covered in it is not a good thing. So I'm just going to use some Windex for this. Wax and grease remover would be ideal, but most people don't have that. If we're going to do a spray can job, we might as well stick to the stuff that people can find. So wax and grease remover is great, but today we're just going to use some Windex because it's a degreaser in and of itself. So I'm just going to spray some on there. You can put it right on your cloth or on the material. It doesn't really matter. Don't need to soak it down. It just takes a little bit. And pull all that orange dust off of there. Make sure you clean the whole guitar. Everything that you're going to be painting needs to, needs to have the dust pulled off of it. But even if there are areas that you're not going to be painting, get the dust away from them so they don't end up getting into your paint job regardless. Okay, now this is all cleaned up. I've even given it a couple minutes to dry off in case there were any areas that I missed when I was drying it uh, so that all that stuff could evaporate and we wouldn't have to worry about moisture. Now if we want to add a pattern or a graphic or something to this, we have to mask it. You can do this using masking tape, masking tape and paper, painter's tape. They're all good options. Uh, what I'm going to be using is transfer tape, otherwise known as frisket. It's basically masking tape, but bigger. It's just to save me some time. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuck down on the surface here. To do that, I have some screws in the back of this neck holding it onto my stand here, onto the bar. So I'm just going to go grab a table, other than this one because it's kind of dirty, 
and lay this thing flat with those screws hanging off the edge and put the frisket on there and then we'll be back. All right, so I've got my piece of transfer tape on the face here. Right now the whole face is masked off. Obviously I want to paint some kind of pattern. So I'm gonna take a pencil and draw it out and then I'm going to take a razor blade. This one's got some cardboard around it, but it's a brand new blade. I'm gonna unwrap it and I'm gonna cut out what I drew. Uh, we're gonna keep it fairly simple because this is a spray can job, so yeah, just watch and enjoy. Alright guys, so there it is. We've got our mask done. All the cutting's finished. Hopefully this turns out cool. Remember, this spray paint travels through the air, it gets all over everything, so make sure you cover everything that you don't want to get paint on. If you don't want to get paint on it, you better have some kind of masking on it. Otherwise, chances are it's going to get some overspray and it's not going to look very good. So it's time for me to spray my black now. I've been shaking this thing for like two minutes. It's a little bit uh, chilly where it was stored, unfortunately, so I had to shake it longer than usual. Anyway, it's time to get the black on here. Uh, you guys can watch how I do that. And I'm hoping to get this done in one coat, because I don't want to build up a bunch of little paint ridges where my mask ends. But if I have to, I'll just put on an extra coat of clear and polish those ridges out. So we'll see how it goes. Make sure you wear a mask.
So guys, once that second paint has had a chance to dry, and I only left mine for like five minutes, uh, maybe ten, you can peel off the mask. Be very careful, and don't touch the paint that you just sprayed on there. If you prefer to wait for the paint to dry fully, give it a day, and then peel it off. But again, be very careful, because once that paint's hardened, then you have the opportunity for it to lift as you're peeling off your mask. So make sure you're paying attention, and if at any time the paint appears to be lifting off, go in with a razor blade, run it along the edge where the paint meets the mask, and carefully separate the two. Once you've peeled the, um, the mask off, if you have little areas that need a little bit of cleanup, for example, I've got one right on my corner here where the edge isn't perfectly straight, I can just go in with the razor blade and take a little bit of the excess black off of there and leave it orange the way it's supposed to be. Alright guys, so all my edges are cleaned up now. I went in with the razor blade and fixed any overspray and stuff that got under the mask and uh, everything looks good. So at this point, I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let the black dry a little bit uh, so that I can come in with my clear coat in a, in a day or two. Um, if you manage to get all that done within about 10 minutes of putting your second color in, then you can go ahead and spray right over it because the orange in this case would have been scuffed so the clear coat has something to bind to mechanically and the black would have just flashed off so the clear coat could bind to it chemically. It really only did take me about 10 minutes but still for the purposes of this I would like to show you how, how it's going to work when I let this sit for a while and then come back to it uh, to put the clear coat on another time. So that's going to be where we wrap this one up and we'll be back next time to put some clear coat on this. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find and subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also a big shout out to Sovereign King who does the vast majority of the music for my channel, way better on guitar than I am. And to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. See you next time.